Nikaanza kupendeza roho Tabasami akupapasa macho Sauti yako nikisikia pia natulia yani punguzi hasira nazo Urembo wako lini nasa roho Siku ya kwanza kukuona kwa macho Samo yonu mekwamia Swezi kutania ndo unipunguzie mawazo I feel you in my ear when I breathe I see you in my dreams when I sleep You are the one I've been waiting for all my life mm. Deep down in my heart I believe Unani feel like a feeling in me You are the one I've been waiting for all my life Uku sana Ute malaika na mabawa yao Ute wana kuiga wenu mama yao Iwe wena chagua si semi no Di semi oh baby uku sawana Ute malaika na mabawa yao Ute wana kuiga wenu mama yao Iwe wena chagua si semi Si semi who si semi Si semi Si semi Listen, ele koe na kuma koki nyo nanae Ele koe na kuchoma kama na umewe Welcome back our dear viewers, my name is Sheila Karonji and I'm the host for the Deep Talk Show a show where we get to talk about topics that address us all issues that affect our day-to-day -day lives Issues like sex, issues like marriage, issues like love, issues like relationships, what that affect us every day. So um, on this episode of the Deep Talk Show, we get to talk about marriage. But also remember, there's a second segment where we have a little bit of entertainment, where we see our young artists come in and do a what they are good at doing, and maybe a singer, a, po a poet, among others. So, on today's episode, I have three guests, and that is Madame Eva Barasha, and she's uh, the director for Hope for Personal Growth, uh, an institution that helps people who are addicted and also people who are having relationship issues. She will later on introduce herself. We also have Mr. Dennis Onen uh, and Becky Onen. Uh, this is a married couple and they own Sin Lab Academy, an institution that helps the youth uh, through equipping them with skills in media. But also, they are also um, counselors and they are also youth pastors at the city church. So, our dear guests, welcome to the Deep Talk Show. Thank Could you. you kindly introduce yourselves? Uh, my name is Mrs. Onen Becky, and I am very glad to be here. Yes, thank you. <laughs> well, my, my name is Dennis Onen, and uh, I'm a filmmaker. That's one of the key things that I just love saying. I'm a filmmaker, and uh, yeah, I and Becky have been married for now coming to seven years so we are really so happy to be here today thank you so much um eva Barasha. um i'm a director of hope for personal growth uh we do all kinds of counseling and yeah i'm mrs Barasha. i'm married with children and a grandchild I've been married for wow. the last 36 years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is something I'm proud of. Wow. I have been married for the last 36 years and I'm still there in yeah. the marriage. Wow. Wow. Thank you for your That's amazing. Okay. Our dear viewers, as an earlier informed you, today we are going to talk about marriage, uh, a topic like any girl outside there, just like me. <laughs> We dream to have put on that dress and say I do uh, when the big day comes. But what's the aftermath of the I do part? What's the aftermath of the church? What happens? And today, 
as the, our, the, our guests introduce themselves, they get to share their experience, they get to share their knowledge about marriage. So, I'll start with Madame Eva. Um, before we go into marriage, most people we don't know the reason why we go into marriage. What's the purpose of marriage? Yeah, marriage is a gift from God. It doesn't matter what you believe in, mm. which faith you have, but we all, all human beings, believe in God. That's why God created Adam and Eve. And when he was creating Adam, he used, I'm a Christian, but I believe even other faiths, mm -hmm. like, like Muslims, they also believe that God created people using soil. Mm -hmm. But later when he, he saw that Adam needed a helper, he got the left tree mm -hmm. of him. And it is scientifically proven that men don't have the uh, uh, same, same number of the leaves, mm -hmm. leaves of right and left. So the left leaf was removed to create a good helper for Adam. So meaning that God himself had a plan of marriage yeah. because you couldn't be together yes. when you are not married. And another thing, the reason why God created marriage, he wanted us to multiply and fill the world. Yeah, and you know how to bring, like, if I can quote, like, one of the verses in the Bible, like in Genesis, mm -hmm. I think Genesis 2, 8, yes. and 9, it says that procreation. Mm -hmm. So that was the purpose of God. And also not to be alone. He wanted us to have companionship with, with, with the people, with the person, actually the person that God gave, Adam, mm -hmm. he wanted this person to be united and be one. That's why in marriage, one plus one, it doesn't matter which face. Mm -hmm. One plus one equals one. So you are one. I think that was the purpose of God to, to, to for the marriage companionship, produce children and fill the world. Yeah. And he blessed us. <laughs> I don't know whether I have answered you. Yeah, that's so perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we've had the purpose of marriage. Becky, Madam Becky, talking about Mr. Wright and Mrs. Wright, how did you know that Mr. Oney and Dennis was Mr. Wright? Or oh, what if, if I'm outside there as we were single, how do I know that he is the right one? Uh, I think for me, I was those of one of the lucky girls uh, on earth who from my childhood I think I was ever positive about marriage and whenever I could get an opportunity to talk to God I always wanted him to guide me because I could not easily by myself tell who was right because as you grow up you date very many guys as many guys date very many girls but in all those guys there are some you look at and you're like oh my god this one i think will be the right husband and after one month down the road it does things and they're like no way this is not what um, uh, the type of a man i would really like but uh, to me when i prayed i knew that oh, of course as, as a christian when you pray god answers you he talks to you back to me, I knew when I meet the person, I will exactly tell that this is the one. Before even you, you start proposing and doing it, the rest of the things. So, and that is the lucky part on me which happened that when I met Dennis and we started relating, I could tell he was the one. Because like to me, it was it was maybe by, by God's grace. But again, uh, sometimes, uh, maybe to the person, maybe there are some people who have not prayed or they have prayed but they don't know how to listen to God's voice. There are different factors which sometimes you can see that you love the person. Sometimes you find that this person exactly feels the emptiness in you. All of us, we have different gaps. There's a time you feel like, I want a man who will do this and this and this and this. And the time you're a girl and dating and you find this guy, you find it, whatever you have been in need of, 
he is the right suitable person that he actually comes and embraces every gap you have ever had and he, com he completes it minus his weaknesses and strength in whatever it is. So you find both of you, your weaknesses and strength, actually you can bear with it. Mm -hmm. So to me, I find that is a person you can easily call a future husband or a potential husband. Because if you can, if I can deal with Dennis's weakness as we are dating, it means I will be able even to, to help him in the future. If he can deal with my weaknesses, the same. Because strength is something nice where you all enjoy. Mm -hmm. But weaknesses is the biggest deal in, in the relationship. Because you feel like, ah, this guy, I think he removes his socks and throws everywhere. Will I manage this in marriage? Will I keep picking these socks from January to January, December to December? So if you feel you can do that, and you find the joy actually, it's not doing it. Yeah. Some people can do the things but they annoy it. But it's doing it with the joy. You find like love overshadows you in yeah. everything. Yeah. So sometimes you feel like, yeah, this is the right man. You find if, if he does this, the way he communicates, you find it is good. The way he does this, it's good. So to me, I find that the suitable husband you can relate with those gaps you have been looking for and they are filled when you are together. And even in the moment of crushing, he still comes back and tells you, I love you. I know we have fought, but mm -hmm. I still love you. Because love does not stop because we fought, because we argued, because we had misunderstanding. Yes. yes. So to me, I feel that is what I can talk about it. Wow. Yes. Thank you. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> ah, so <laughs> This goes to Mr. Dennis. Yeah. We are excited about marriage and stuff. But what are those things that um we that people don't say about marriage? What should one expect in marriage? Like for instance. Marriage is sweet. Mm -hmm. That is one thing I can uh, honestly say. I just envy, you know, like uh, she says you've spent 36 years. And I'm looking at 36 years, not 36 years in life, but in marriage, you know, and you ask yourself what could keep her that long in marriage that she's not walked out. That simply tells you that marriage is sweet. Mm -hmm. That is the first thing I would really like tell to every, everybody out there that marriage is an institution where learning never stops. That is something. If you're coming to marriage like I know it all, then you're going to hit the dead end. Marriage is that place, that one place where you will never graduate. So, and when people say this, some of these things, like sometimes you don't really understand why would they say that it's an institution, it's a, you know, it's an institution where you'll never graduate and all that, because there is nobody who will ever come out and say, I'm a marriage expert. Okay. There is learning on a daily basis and it's a learning for a lifetime. And that's why the scriptures for us, like who are Christians, we say till death do us what? when you're taking the vows but also the other thing that people have to understand i always tell people that marriage can be on two grounds you can make it heaven that's a bed of roses for yourself or you can make it hell it's up to how you really embrace it in the beginning so when you're going into marriage you understand that the main purpose of marriage was for the two people to come together and like you know like and the two shall become one, one. now for me that is the process that everybody has to understand before they actually go into marriage. You know, if they say the two shall become one, that means simply these are two different people. Two different people who are trying as much as they can to become compatible with each other's weaknesses, like she says, with each other's differences, with, this, which are, with each other's cultures. So there is a lot that when you're coming into marriage, you have to prepare yourself and just understand that I'm entering into an institution of learning where there's not going to be graduation. I will learn and I'll have to embrace there are things that you pick up on the way and there are things that you have to do away with. So when you're coming into marriage, you have to prepare yourself for all that, that there are things I'm going to enjoy. And of course, there's going to be moments of disagreements. I don't want to call it fights. Disagreements, yes. I want my things to be done like this. And no, I can't do it like that. But these differences, how compatible shall you be at the end of the time? Will you learn one another and actually come to a point where the two of you become yeah. one? Wow. Because the question is asking, what do you want in mm. marriage? Mm. There are three things that we don't have in our parents' homes. Mm. But it is them 
that have. Mm -hmm. We only need three things in marriage. Mm -hmm. We need love, we need care, mm -hmm. and we need security. Mm -hmm. Why do we need these three? Yet, our parents do love us, our brothers, mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. that we shouldn't even leave our homes. But we always want to go and find men. Mm -hmm. um, one, the kind of love that you will give me is not the same love that my brother would give me, that my dad would give me, that my mother would give me. Imagine sleeping with someone mm. naked for the rest of your life. Mm. If I'm sick, it's the first one to touch me. Yes. Oh, you are feeling hot. Mm. Oh, what is it? If I'm breathing badly, he's the one who would ask me. Yes. If um, I don't have a nice dress, I don't have nice hair. He was the one I would ask, I need this. But remember, those people can't ask. Yes. Yeah, for you, don't you work? Why yeah. don't you know? That's true. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that is the person mm -hmm. who will even find that I, I have thrown away the beddings and he would cover me without even me knowing. That's true. And I would cover him without even him knowing. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of love, that is care yes. that we need. Then the love, because these days the problem is that girls are mixing care and love, mm -hmm. and care is not love. Mm -hmm. I'm Tiga will tell you that I love you in my heart. <laughs> he will not tell you that, oh, I love you, darling, all those things. He will not say, <laughs> but he will care about you. Yes. Dress you, give you a shelter, give yeah. you everything. But yeah, it is love, but no, it is care. Mm -hmm. Love is deep in the heart. Mm -hmm. And it is only this man who would give you that kind of love, or this woman mm -hmm. who would give you that kind of love. Yes. And yeah, we need love, which they can't give us. Mm -hmm. We need care mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. Can your brother wake up in the morning and you produce children mm -hmm. in your father's home, and your brother comes out and says, Oh, she's my sister, she has produced so many children at home. Let me build the house, let me take them to school. Let it is your husband who would do that. Yeah. No other person can do it for you. So that's why, Sheila, you have to get married and... <laughs> <laughs> I like um, it. But then also security. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need the kind of security mm -hmm. that they can't give us at our home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'm a young girl, they would drive me to nursery, to secondary, even to university, then they would control me in the house. Mm -hmm. And they, they don't go out, out there is dangerous, blah, 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 blah. They only stop on that. Maybe they give you, yeah, they don't stop on that. They give you a shelter, they give you food, they, yeah, they yes. look after you. But now this man will give you security, yeah. social security, mm -hmm. psychological security, security. Mm -hmm. physical security, um, uh, spiritual security, mm -hmm. all the securities. Mm -hmm. Because you know we have insecurities mm -hmm. and fears of unknown. Mm -hmm. But it is now this man mm -hmm. and this woman mm -hmm. who will give us all of those securities mm -hmm. that our brothers, sisters, mothers can't give us. Wow. wow. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talking about security. Um, Vicky, mm -hmm. what do you think scares people away from marriage? Uh, the first thing I, I actually when when uh, to be also scared me before I got married, I was like, ha, ah, staying with this guy. Forever, like, <laughs> like uh, this. When you say yes, there is no going back because you fear God. You fear doing certain things. Yeah. And 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 you feel like, if I speak the I do, mm. it's lifetime. So some people are scared of commitment, like really scared. Some girls are still scared of commitment, and some men are scared mm. of commitment. They don't want to take care of one another. They feel like uh, sometimes maybe it might actually also due to the growth. Because once you are matured, mm -hmm. you reach a point and you're like, I need someone who I want to stay with to spend the rest of my life. But as you're still young, some people are still in their 18, 20s, 25, and they are so scared. They're like, no, I still want to chill. I don't want to give someone an accountability. Like, I want to go somewhere, come back at the time I want, do whatever I feel, dress up the way I want, eat what I feel. You get so, but those are part of the things which scares. 
Like to enter marriage, and like if I get this man is going to tell me, don't do this, don't visit your family until you ask permission, don't spend that money, it is our money, don't do this. So they feel like, man, this is a prison. So that is why some young people still fear to get married, and others are scared of give, 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 giving birth. So uh, there's some, actually, it sounds awkward. There's some ladies who tell you, uh, me, I don't want to get married because of children, I don't want to give birth, period. And you're like, oh, who thinks of that? But some people still think of it. Then there are others, uh, some men also don't want to get married, maybe, because they feel like a contraband controlled maybe by the wives or their counterfeit, as I say. So there are different reasons that people don't want to get married. They want it, they don't want it. So they're in the middle of yes and no, yes and no. <laughs> and also, um, mm -hmm. perhaps, um, as, as people are in that kind of state, mm -hmm. Uh, she once she talks of insecurities, mm -hmm. the fact that you are not sure yes. of where you're heading to, to most people it's a big fear, and one of the greatest things that we have is overcoming our fears. So, and then if they have not yet overcome their fears, but whether it's the girls or the boys, mm -hmm. for the guys, higher point is always responsibility. Yes, there is so much responsibility in marriage, but it is. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they are not psychologically set and they have not prepared themselves. Some people look at themselves like, uh, for instance, I'll give a point. We, we have young people who are in their 20s. And someone is around 24 years for a boy and he's not yet sure of what his life is going to be like. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking myself, if you are 20 years onward and you're not sure of what life you're going to live, you're going to make 28 when you're still trying to reason out like what do I really want to do in life? Like you've never set yourself ready for anything. That kind of person, if it came to marriage, he would rather prefer to impregnate people's daughters and he will end up having as many kids as. And then he goes even in their 30s. And then when they are getting to their 40s, that's when they're like, wait, actually I need to settle. Mm -hmm. But time is running out. Mm -hmm. You get the point. So, this fact of not, not, not having the certainty of what is coming up next, what is, what is ahead of me, and, and the fear of responsibilities could also be one of the key reasons because of like, the people that I've talked to, they find, ah, man, how? How do I, you know, like when you give birth to kids and then now there's school fees, now there's, there's the rent aspect, then the woman is going to become, like they're not sure and they are, they are not ready to leave their comfort zone. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's why we call it the fears of unknown. Yeah. Because you don't know what you are going to face when you get engaged with this woman. Wow. Fears of unknown. Yes. <laughs> wow. Um, Madam Eva, uh, yes. talking about fears of unknown, we have, uh, we have these three C's that people always talk about, chemistry, the commitment and character. How do these three C's shape marriage? Uh, for us, we, we have it as three C's, but uh, we call it the way you are right now. Mm -hmm. You are a combination of three factors. Nature, which is hereditary, which is in your DNA. Mm -hmm. Nature, the way you are nurtured. Mm -hmm right from your childhood and environmental factor. Those three factors will make your personality, your character, your behavior, and it gives us the shit I will see today. Mm -hmm. In terms of character, personality, and behavior. Now, when you have something to share with me, you will share it with me. But when you don't have it, you can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. How were you nurtured, first of all? In a good environment, with good morals, with uh, a woman of good character? Because it is women, actually, who shapes us. Yeah, the home must be maybe, maybe having uh, rules to follow, but usually it is the mother of the home to monitor the children, to install behavior, to teach A, B, C, D. So if they have taught me to be a good person, that's what I will give him. 
If they have taught me to be a bad person, that's what I would give him. Uh, the environment, uh, environmental factor, the environment that I have interacted with, mm -hmm. it is the character that of, in that environment that I would pick, and that's what I would give him. I always give examples of lawyers. For them, in the environment, they are trained to put on courts 24-7. And you find that every lawyer has a, a court, mm -hmm. black and white. <laughs> that, that is who went in a, in a, in, a, in a single schools. Yeah. You know some schools, I don't want to mention the school, mm -hmm. because it is not the school that I attended. Mm -hmm. But they used to nurture girls mm -hmm. to be wives. And every man would look for a girl from those good schools in Western Uganda and in Central. You know those schools where men used to go and pick mm -hmm. good girls to yeah. marry? Yeah. Because they are nurtured to be wives. So if you are nurtured to abuse people, that's how you abuse him. Mm -hmm. And we say that the, the luggage that you come mm -hmm. with from your environment, your upbringing, your DNA, because there, there, there are some characters that we can't change. Yeah. The ones that we got in our DNA. My mother used to behave like this. My dad used to be quadrasan. You find that it is not environmental factor, it is not natural thing, but it is in his DNA. And he would produce children of the same. Of the same. I, maybe a child grew up when the parents were fighting, mm. and to him, it's normal to fight your wife. Mm -hmm. It's normal even if you can cut her hand. And that's what she will do in this home. Mm -hmm. I grew up seeing my mother being beaten. Why can't I beat you? Mm -hmm. So nature, nature, and environment mm -hmm. makes us who we are in character and personality. Now we go to get married. I come with my luggage. Maybe in courtship study, you you didn't understand me. Yeah. I was hiding so many things. You didn't realize. So that's why we have uh, stages in courtship study. Mm -hmm. We have attraction. Mm -hmm. We have love, uh, attraction, friendship, love, dating, courtship, marriage, mm -hmm. and separation. Why separation? Because one day we, this will do us apart. Maybe there is a divorce, there is a separation. So we have to follow in that courtship story. You get married to someone we really understand very, very well. It is always good to get married to your friend. Yes. Not just because he's a son or so and so, he's a daughter or so and so, he has a lot of money. Does he have a car? Am I going to drive? So now if I come with all those problems, Every morning, I put on the table one problem. Mm -hmm. He looks at me and he was like, is this the girl I put my mm -hmm. Yes. And she's like, no, 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 no. Thank you to not be like this. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I'm leaving this one. In fact, I'm not going to eat food. That is one thing of destroying the marriage. Mm -hmm. Next day, he does the same. Because now you have annoyed him. He's going also to bring his luggage that you didn't see in court ship story <laughs> put on the table. And you are like, what? Is this the case I knew? Yes. I'm going to my father's home. Mm. So now, because of that, the communication breaks. Mm -hmm. And when the communication breaks, the marriage has gotten broken. Because it is the communication that builds the marriage. Yeah. When it is not there, marriage is not there. Mm -hmm. I don't know this, this is what you meant, mm -hmm. but how uh, this is how I can approach it. Mm -hmm. It's very perfectly answered. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, and, and also, just to add on what she's really been saying, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a factor that is only affecting the women, yeah. but even to, to the men. Mm -hmm. If you are a young boy um, growing up at this moment, for instance, uh, I want to not, I, I don't want to talk about the very, very young ones, but there is a stage, like, you know, when you're in your teens, you now understand things, how things are being done, you're clocking 18 and all that, and you are sure the next stage after school is actually going to be what? Mm -hmm. Marriage. And what is happening is, uh, aside from those who really go in because they have nothing else they're doing and all that, mm -hmm. but 
for the chemistry, the commitment, and then you're, 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 you're talking about the character. She's really talked, she's given us very, very clearly how this character is really being shaped up. I'm looking at these young boys, or rather young men, who are say, I don't do this kind of thing. I don't clean dishes. No, it's the work of the woman. Um, but you want chemistry in the house. Yes. I, I, I don't go to the kitchen. I don't cook. I mean, she's sick, you're the two of you. What are you going to do? You're going to make sure she cooks. Yeah. Oh, you you force her. Right. Or you have to go to, maybe perhaps, yeah, best of it is like, oh, you know what? We can't cook, so let's at least go to the restaurant. But these are some of the things that really have to evolve. My mother taught me how to do housework when I was a little boy. And it, I grew through the time with this. I understood that actually I do not have to, if I woke up earlier than my wife did, it doesn't hurt to go to the kitchen and make some breakfast. Perhaps that's chemistry. Mm. You know what it does? I mean, I take it to her, she'll be like, oh my goodness, it's <laughs> like she's overjoyed saying he can do this for me and I'm not doing it because hey, I want to please you. No, I mean, if you can do it for me, I could do it for you as well. I have the time at that moment to do that for you. Kupendeza roho Tabasami ya kupapa sa macho Sauti ya koni kisikia Pia natulia ya ripunguzi ya sira nazo Urembo wa kulini nasa roho Siku ya kwanza kukuona kwa macho Samo yonu mekwamia Suezi kutania ndo unipunguzi ye mawazo I feel you in my ear when I breathe I see you in my dreams you are the one I've been waiting for all my life mm -hmm. Deep down in my heart I believe Unani feel like a feeling real You are the one I've been waiting for all my life Ukusana, ute malaika na mabawa yao Ute wana kuiga wenu mama yao Iwe wena chagua si semi no Disemi oh baby uku sawa na Ute malaika na mabawa yao Ute wana kuiga wenu mama yao Iwe wena chagua si semi Si semi huu si semi Si semi Si semi Listen, ele koe na kuma kokinyo na nae Ele koe na kuchoma kama na umewe Ulitama ni wewe to uagene Mie, ai, doma na nilivo mwacho kama umuwe We haura Tutuajuma Tafanya yote ju ni mupate Tutuajuma Na mpenda nogo baba bake Tutuajuma Tafanya yote ni mupate Tutuajuma Na mpenda nogo baba bake Tutuajuma Tafanya yote ni mupate Uko sana, uti malaika na mabawa yao 
Uche wana kuiga wendo mama ya Ni wewe na chagua si semi no Si semi oh baby uko sawa na Uche malaika na mabawa ya Uche wana kuiga wendo mama ya Ni wewe na chagua si semi Si semi Thank you